Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Lee and I'm a DIY electric skateboard builder. In this series, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a DIY electric mountain board. From scratch, component parts, all the way to a fully ripping, shredding dirt machine. Let's do this. Right, straight out the gates, I have to tell you guys that this is the most boring phase of building an electric skateboard, and that is the planning phase. Why do we plan our builds? Well, it saves us money, saves us buying wrong components and then having to buy new components in the future. But more importantly, from the outset, it makes sure that you only buy components that are gonna work together to achieve the speeds and the acceleration and the range that you want out of your electric skateboard. Now, throughout this video, I'm gonna be referencing an excellent resource on the internet called the eSkate Calculator. I'm gonna put the link in the description. Make sure you check it out and you follow along when you're looking at your components you're going to put all of the specs of all the things into that eSkate calculator and it's going to tell us the top speed and it's going to tell us various other things that we need to know when we're building or when we're thinking about building an electric skateboard so with all that said the first thing that you're going to want to think about when you're designing your electric skateboard is the battery for me that's where I start how big do you want the battery to be and what type of chemistry are you going to use in your build is it gonna be either lithium iron cells, which is my preference, or is it gonna be lithium polymer cells? Now this is not a battery you would use in an electric skateboard, but I actually don't own any big boy lipos, so this is a lipo, but it's very, very small. Now there are advantages and disadvantages to both types of chemistry. Lithium iron is more stable. It's just a nicer thing to have lying around the house or in an electric skateboard, in my opinion. But its discharge rate or its C rating is a lot more limited compared to a lipo. A lipo can discharge lots and lots of amps continuously, but with that, they become a little less stable. These guys, you've really, I mean, you've got to look after both of these batteries, but these guys especially, you've got to be really, really careful. They're quite famous for fires and all that sort of stuff. Some people, when they're building an electric mountain board, in fact, it's probably safe to say a lot of people, most people prefer lipos because of all those amps when you're off-roading, you need them. But my build is more of a long range, all round, all terrain build. I will do a bit of off-roading, but nothing mental. Mostly I wanna check out the sort of long trails through the woods and all that. So for me, I'm gonna go with lithium iron. Now this is just one cell and will be absolutely useless for electric skateboarding on its own. But what we do, we build a large battery out of these individual batteries. We're gonna add some of them in series and we're gonna add some in parallel with each other. And they are rated, when you talk about batteries, you'll talk about maybe a 10S8P pack or a 10S4P or an 8S4P or something like that. What that means is, let's say it's 10S, 10 batteries in series, which increase the voltage of the battery. And it means, for 8p, 8 in parallel all the way through the battery. So in total would be 80 cells, 10 in series, 8 in parallel from each one of those series uh, batteries. Now the voltage of a lithium battery, both batteries, is 3.7 volts. That is called nominal voltage. It isn't the actual voltage that the battery will be at all times because when you fully charge these suckers, they go to 4.2 volts-ish, depending on the cell and yeah that is the fully charged voltage now the eSkate calculator that i linked you to works off nominal voltage so the specs that you see on there are for when the batteries are at their nominal voltage not when they're at their fully charged rating of 4.2 volts each so what does that mean that means the specs on the calculator are going to be slightly lower than what you'll actually achieve in real life with the battery fully charged we're doing a 10s battery so when you add these batteries in series, you add the voltages together. So 10 of these in a row, nominal pack voltage level will be 37 volts. Fully charged pack level will be 42 volts. Five volts doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a hell of a lot, the performance difference. 
and you'll get a lot of range out of those five volts. So bear that in mind when you are thinking about your battery. Back to our battery, it's gonna be 10S 8P. Write it down, that's what my battery's gonna be. Your battery might be different. Think about it, whatever you wanna build, write it down put it into the eSkate calculator. Another thing you need to know before you start building your electric skateboard is what wheel size do you want to use. Here I've got the 97 millimeter ABEC 11 and the 80 millimeter um, orangutan Kegels. These are gonna give you, on the same motor pulley and wheel pulley, these are gonna give you different acceleration and top speed. The bigger wheel is gonna give you a bigger top speed but a slower acceleration and the um, smaller wheel is gonna give you the complete opposite, faster acceleration, less of a top speed. You need to know it because you need to know uh, how this is gonna affect your top speed on your build and whether you might need to increase the, or decrease the wheel size depending on, on the other components. So yes, wheels, take your wheel size, put it in the calculator. Next on the list is VESCs. What VESCs? These are the speed controllers that are gonna change the battery voltage and amps into motor voltage and amps. They're gonna control the motors from the battery voltage. You need to know what you're gonna use. I've got two FOC boxes here. This is what I'm gonna use for my build initially. I have ordered a Unity from Inertion, but it's taking forever to get here, so. so we'll start with these, and if the Unity comes, we'll swap them out and change it around. But for now, the Inertion FOC box probably at the time of making this video, because I haven't got a Unity, the best uh, VESC on the market. Another thing you need to buy is motors. These are very important to get right. These are obviously the main driving force in the skateboard. I've gone for 6374 from Streetwing, which is a UK vendor. Um, I've used these motors before. I've had the 6355, I've had the 6365, which are currently on the Icarus. If you saw the electric skateboard surgery, you saw me replacing these. Yep, you need good motors. And one of the things I would recommend is that you get the censored motors. If you have a sensor, it makes life so much easier. You can start the board from completely stopped. You can run FOC mode censored. It just makes everything so much easier. One consideration you do have to have is the shaft size for the motor pulley size. These motors all come with eight millimeter shafts, so make sure you get pulleys with eight millimeter holes to go in there. Some motors, such as the Alien ones, come with 10 millimeter shafts. Be careful, just make sure you get the right one. Obviously, the bigger the motor, the, um, the, the more torque your board is gonna have. These are also rated at power ratings. This one is rated for 3,550 watts. That's per motor, we've got two of them. Are we gonna use that amount of power? Well, it depends on battery voltage and how many amps you're giving to these things at the end of the day. That's gonna uh, dictate the, the, the how many watts you're, you're pushing through your skateboard. So these can do up to 3,550. We won't be running them. Uh, that hard, but we're running them a couple of thousand watts each for sure. The main consideration with motors is the KV value. This is the way that the motor, motor is wound and you need to be really, really careful when you choose a motor based on what you're doing uh, with the rest of your build. Obviously some KVs are not gonna be suited to some battery voltages. You need to do your research on the Eastgate calculator, put in the KV rating of the motor you're looking at and see how it affects your board. I've gone for 190 kV because that's a really nice sweet spot for the sort of um, the sort of specs that I'm doing. So yeah, that's me, 190 kV. The next thing that you want to think about is the drivetrain. I have got Etox's amazing, critically acclaimed gear drive system, um, and what this is is you have a motor pulley and a wheel pulley. They touch each other. They they drive each other. There's no belts. There's nothing like that and there are various um, advantages and disadvantages to that system. I'll explain more about it in the section where we install these. But the point remains, you must know your own specs for the wheel pulleys you intend to use, how many teeth on the wheel pulley, how many teeth on the motor pulley, because that is a geared system and adjusting those two values is gonna adjust the top speed and the acceleration of your build. Basically, if you gear it one way, you're gonna bias more towards top speed. If you gear it the other way, more towards acceleration and somewhere in the middle, you can balance it out. My system is a helical cut gear system and the ratio is five to one. So five turns of the motor pulley equals one full turn of the wheel pulley. Yours might be different. If you're building an electric skateboard, you might have 1536, 1438, you might have something like that. 
put it into the Eastgate calculator. Now for the other electronics that you're gonna need in your build. You are definitely going to need a battery management system, otherwise known as BMS. This little puppy takes the charge voltage and amps and it spreads it across the pack evenly to balance charge all those individual cells that you've got in your pack. So you definitely need one of these. It's the safest way to charge an electric skateboard. It'll mean that your batteries are always balanced going forward and you need one of these. Very important, you need to make sure you get a BMS with the right S rating for how many series batteries you've got. We're doing a 10S build. I've got a 10S BMS. You can also get BMSs that control the discharge current. I don't like to use them. The VESCs themselves have a, a, a component in there that will control that and will cut it off and manage that sort of thing for you. This is another component to have in the way of the discharge and I don't like doing that. Charge, 100% needed. Discharge, I don't use them. You might wanna use them. Do whatever you feel comfortable with. Also, you're going to need an anti-spark. I've got two different types here. I've got a very small and compact one and I've also got a larger one from Russia. This is the same uh, anti-spark as what's in my Icarus build. It's been phenomenal for me. I've had no problems with it whatsoever. I was gonna use it in the Tramper, but when I looked at the sizes of the, of the enclosures and stuff like that, I realized that I was gonna need a smaller anti-spark switch, so I went for this. Basically, the anti-spark stops the battery from, from arcing, from sparking when you connect it to the speed controllers. When you turn the board on, um, you're using one of these to, to, to control, to slowly ramp up that power to the VESCs, stops it stops it from uh, sparking, it's called inrush control. So yeah, that's what an anti-spark does. You definitely don't need one for your build. You might want to use a loop key. You can use um, an XT90 anti-spark key, which is a physical. A lot of people prefer those. They do wear out eventually. So do these. I've done a thousand miles on the Icarus so far and this one's still going strong. So I don't see any reason why I wouldn't use another anti-spark switch, anti-spark switch. And then lastly, but not least, are all the bits and pieces for the build you're gonna need. You're gonna need the remote. I've gone for the Alien Power Systems remote. I uh, haven't used it before. In fact, I've never owned a trigger style remote, but thought I'd go for it this time. If I'm wearing gloves, this might be a bit easier to, to use than a, than a thumb one. So, Alien Power Systems. Also, you're gonna need enclosures. If you're doing like an under skateboard build, then you're gonna to wanna to get enclosures or make enclosures uh, for your build specifically. Uh, my uh, electronics will be on top of the board. So I'm using this uh, case here, which was like 40 euros. Um, and I've measured it out and I know that I can just about fit 10S 8P in this box. So this will be the main battery box for the build. And obviously, honorable mention, you're also going to need a load of tools. You're gonna to need Allen keys, you're gonna need screwdrivers, you're gonna need a socket set, you're gonna need a skate tool, a soldering iron, you need to buy wire, solder, uh, maybe nuts and bolts and other uh, ancillary bits like that, heat shrink, um, nylon braiding, all of those things you're gonna to need to buy. Um, but for me, I normally buy them as I'm going, just see what I need. I've got a few bits in the garage anyway, so if I need anything extra, I'll just buy it as and when I come to it. But for now, bear in mind, you're gonna need a, quite a few tools to actually build your electric skateboard. Right, okay then guys, so I am sat in my crappy hotel in Monaco. I've got myself a beer and I've loaded up the Eastgate calculator. And the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is change the battery type to lithium iron because as we know, those are the cells that I'm using in my build. We're gonna go for a 10S build and the motor KV is 190. We leave the efficiency at 85. And then we come over to the other side of the page and we put our gearing in. Put it in the right way around. And the wheel size, I'm using Tramp Superstars. As you know, wheel and tires together are 200 millimeters. So we wanna put that into the calculator. Let's have a look at what we've got. Back in the center of the calculator itself, it tells you some important information about the build. Some of this we don't need to know. Battery volts, 36 volts, nominal voltage for my build at 10S. Fully charged is gonna be 42 volts. So we're gonna get slightly better performance than this calculator, but it's a good base to look at. Not really interested in RPMs. We are interested in ERPM. Now with the Fox box and some of the earlier hardwares for the BESCs, there is a limit of 60,000 ERPM. You can't go above that. So you need to make sure that you're not gonna go basically anywhere near 60,000. 
because don't forget when it's fully charged the ERPM is going to go up as well so we're quite comfortably under at 47.8 thousand ERPM and then top speed 27.24 weighted um, I think it's reasonable for me I'm quite happy with that and uh, you know I know that I know this build is going to work we could now go over and we could change the KV to 170s had I have bought 170 kV motors my top speed would have been 24.37 miles an hour which is probably a little bit slow uh, for me maybe that would be fine for you but you can see that choosing the right kV is, is quite important for getting the specs that you want and also we could change the number of cells to a 12s build which I might do in the future and we can see that the top speed goes up to weighted 32.69 miles an hour so that would be a very fast board at 12s i'm quite comfortable that i picked the 10s for now we'll see how we go in the future but as you can see this calculator is very important when you are looking at building a board it just means that when you go out and buy all your parts you know that everything's going to work together you're not going to have any problems and i do this first before i build any skateboard so there we go guys that is my build into the calculator i'm very happy so now i would proceed and buy all the parts so that's it then guys sorry it's been a bit of a boring one for the first one but it's very essential to plan your build correctly as i hope you've seen from this video episode two same time next week we're going to be installing the etox gear drive system i can't wait to show you that i think you'll really enjoy that as i really enjoyed building it so um yeah i'll see you next week guys